Welcome to the Architecture Woodshop and Digital Fabrication Lab on the Marietta campus of Kennesaw State University. This is a process how-to video about the butt joint. At the end of this video, you will know about the butt joint, what it is best used for, and some of the different ways the parts of a butt joint can be made. The process to make any joint has the same steps in common. These steps are covered in more detail in the joinery overview video. In this video, we'll walk through these steps as they need to be performed when making the butt joint. The common steps for the joint making process are the following. Joint selection, and we assume you selected or are at least considering the butt joint. Then layout, followed by measuring and marking, then cutting or profiling, dry fit and tune, and finally, assembly and glue up. A butt joint is typically used for joining two pieces of material where the joint will not be under significant stress. The butt joint can be used with wood or other wood-like products like MDF, plywood, or particle board. Let's take a closer look at the butt joint. The butt joint is probably the simplest joint there is. It gets its name from the fact that the joined pieces of material are simply butted up against one another. The parts of the butt joint are not given special names since there aren't any special cuts to make the joint surface a different shape or profile. The butt joint goes together by putting the two pieces in contact with one another. Usually an adhesive is used to hold the joint together. The joint can then be further reinforced with brads, nails, or screws if needed or desired. We'll cover some tips later that will help you improve the quality of the butt joints that you make. Let's talk about wood grain for a minute before we look at the different types of butt joints. When a tree is alive, the tree uses its tubular cell structure to move nutrients between the roots and the leaves. When wood is dried, the moisture is removed from those tubes. Dried wood is very much like a bundle of straws, with the straws representing the grain of the wood. End grain is the open end of the straws. Side grain is the sides of the straws. Different configurations or variations of the butt joint include the following examples. The edge butt joint joins side grain to side grain. The frame butt joint joins end grain to side grain and can be used to make either a corner or a T configuration. The non-right angle butt joint also joins end grain to side grain, but at an angle other than 90 degrees. The miter butt joint joins end grain to end grain. Even though most miter joints are indeed butt joints, the miter joint is considered a joint type of its own. There is a separate video that focuses on the miter joint. Note that there is much more contact surface to attach to on a side grain surface. Since the end grain surface is the end of the straw-like tubes, there is much less contact surface for the same area. So, there really isn't much surface to attach to at all when you're dealing with end grain. We'll discuss how to deal with that a little later during assembly and glue up. Before getting too far into the process to make the butt joint, you should consider whether finished surfaces will be created before or after assembly. Sanding surfaces to produce the finished surface can actually change the dimension of the piece or how it fits with the other pieces. For most butt joints, you can perform the process steps to produce the finished surface and final dimension of the pieces before measuring for or cutting the joints. Keep in mind that if you will do any final sanding to make a butt joint flush or flat, you'll want to have a little extra material to sand away. In order to keep track of what each piece is and its correct position in the final assembly, we recommend that you label the pieces with their position in the finished piece. If the finished assembly is like a box or cabinet, 
then marking a triangle on the top that points to the back or on the front that points up is an easy way to quickly mark the position of the pairs of pieces that become the left and right sides, the front and back sides, or the top and bottom pieces. Note that they also differentiate the inside and outside surfaces. Keep in mind that you'll want to remove or cover up labels before your piece is finished. So mark lightly in pencil, not the Sharpie that we've used in the video for clarity. There aren't really any guidelines for how butt joints are made or sized, but there are two significant areas of concern regarding butt joints. They are alignment and strength. Butt joints along the edges of long pieces of material can be very difficult to align during assembly and glue up. A biscuit joint or tongue and groove joint might be a better choice. Butt joints that will be exposed to stress should be reinforced with brads, nails, or screws. Another version of a reinforced butt joint would be a dowel joint where dowel pins are used for reinforcement. Butt joints with thin material, a quarter inch or less, are difficult. By that I mean that it is a challenge to control positioning during assembly, and it is a challenge to apply adequate adhesive without an excessive amount of adhesive and they can be a challenge to clamp. A rabbit or dado joint might make a better choice. Once the size and position of the joint has been decided on, it's time to measure and lay out the butt joint. The following tools will be needed for measuring and marking the parts to be joined with the butt joint. A tape measure or rule, a pencil, a striking knife, if you want a precise joint, and a sliding bevel gauge, if your joint's going to be non-90 degrees. Use the following process to measure and mark the pieces of the butt joint. There aren't any special cuts or profiles to be made, so simply measure or lay out the pieces of material to be cut and label or mark them so it's clear how they will be assembled. Double checking your measurements is always recommended. Think, measure twice, cut once. The pieces for the butt joint can be cut and dressed using any of the following methods or pieces of equipment. To cut the pieces, the sliding compound miter saw, the band saw, the table saw with assistance from the shop staff, and then to clean up the edges, you can use the horizontal edge sander, or the combination belt and disc sander. When deciding how you will cut the pieces for the butt joint, here are some things to consider that influence your decision. The material at the location of the butt joint needs to be as flat as possible so that there is a good interface between the two pieces. Note that knots in the interface make the joint weaker. If the cutting process will produce an edge that needs to be cleaned up, Leave some additional material when cutting the piece. Plan for how you will sand to the line, producing a flat final edge that is the desired size. If an exact size is critical, make sure your pencil is sharp or use a striking knife to scribe the line. Whatever method you use to cut your pieces, use a fence, gauge, or jig whenever possible so that your material is controlled during the cutting process and your cuts are as straight and smooth as possible. When making the cut, perform the following steps. For a rip cut, set the fence to the desired distance. Position the material in preparation for the cut Make sure any push blocks that will be used to push the material through the saw are within easy reach. Turn on the saw and then make the cut, moving the material smoothly through the saw. Turn off the saw. 
In a similar manner for a cross cut, adjust the miter gauge as needed, then the other steps are the same. Be sure to clean up the equipment and the surrounding area when you're finished. If you feel the cut will be challenging to get right, make a test cut in some material similar to the good material you will be cutting and verify the following. that the cut surface is flat and that the position of the cut is correct, that you get the desired width of material or desired angle. If you're making an angled cut, test an assembly of the test cut parts to verify the angle is what you want. If any of these results are different from what they need to be, adjust your equipment and make another test cut. If necessary, ask a staff person for assistance. Once both of the parts of the joint are cut, you will probably need to adjust or tune the joint so that it fits correctly. Your objective for the butt joint is to have a tight interface between the pieces to be joined. They should meet flush with no gaps. If the pieces aren't flat, you will probably need to use a sander to clean up the edge. Shorter edges can be cleaned up on the combination belt and disc sander. Be careful to sand at 90 degrees or the desired angle so as to not alter the angle of the cut in the material. If you are making a butt joint that has ingrain on one or both of the pieces, it is recommended that you apply a light coating of glue on the ingrain surface prior to gluing the joint together. This will help to seal off the pores in the open ingrain. After allowing the adhesive to partially cure for a couple of minutes, apply the glue to both pieces of the joint and continue with the glue up as you normally would. When reinforcing the butt joint, hold the part securely in the proper position. Then pre-drill pilot holes for screws so that they don't split material when installed. Toenail any brads or nails that you install so that they are less likely to pull straight out from the joint.
The critical keys for success with any joinery, but particularly the butt joint, include the following. Accurate and consistent milling and dimensioning of materials. Usually this means parts that are straight and square, and if they're supposed to be uniform size and thickness, that they are indeed the same, and don't forget to allow for final sanding if needed. Accurate and precise layout and marking of joint location and dimension. Double check the setup of any equipment to confirm that it is set to the desired angle. Don't assume that equipment typically set to 90 degrees is actually set to 90 degrees. Please ask the staff for assistance if you're not sure. Precise cutting to the desired location. Making test cuts in identically dimensioned material will help to assure accuracy of setup. If you're using a tool or performing a technique for the first time, try it out on some scrap material before attempting something new on your good wood. Sneak up on the final dimension and fit. As you work through the process, plan how you can rough cut the joint and then tune it to perfection. Ensure the tools that you will be using are sharp. Some additional keys for success with the butt joint include the following. The pieces to be joined with the butt joint should be flat where the joint will be made and the interface between the two pieces should not have any gaps. When the pieces are assembled and glued together, a thin layer of adhesive should be spread on all of the mating surfaces. Excess glue will only result in squeeze out and will not strengthen the joint. If the joint is to be reinforced with brads, nails, or screws, it is important to hold the parts in the desired position when the reinforcing fasteners are installed. If reinforcing fasteners will be installed, drill pilot holes slightly smaller than the hardware to avoid splitting the material. A well-made butt joint has the following characteristics. When the joint is assembled, there are not any gaps between the pieces, and there is not any glue squeeze out around the joint. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope you come to visit us in the shop sometime soon.